This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. You'll know him, you love him, and everybody loves Larry. Larry Brown. Hello, Larry. Everyone loves Larry. That's, was that a sitcom? No, I think it should have been. That, that that could be your sitcom, Everybody Loves Larry. Or how about Nobody but, Nobody Loves Larry? Yeah, yeah that would be more like it. Yeah, that's what, more, was, what? McLean Stevenson had a, didn't he have a well, sitcom he had, with he had Larry? A big, it was a big failure, that show. It was called Hello, Larry. Hello, oh, okay, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. And a, he uh, he he left Mash for that. He left Mash. There's a list of famous uh, actors that left successful shows and ended their careers. He's one of them. Yeah, um, yeah. He so, was funny though. Know? Um, who was the girl that left uh, Cheers? Um, uh, Shelley Long. Yeah, Shelley Long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was replaced by... We never heard of her again. No, we never heard of her. Well, I, we did. She did a couple of movies. You know, they go on, they do a couple of movies, and they're moderate successes, and then you never hear from them again. Yeah. You know, keep your <laughs> keep, keep your day job. I mean, if you've got a series, play it till it dies, you know? Oh, you milk it, yeah. I mean, Seinfeld took it to nine years, and then he just said, hey, we're still good, but we're not going to get any better. And we're only going to get worse. Let's stop now while the public still loves us, you know. And and he did, and that was a good yeah. time to do it. But that was nine years in. Yeah, and if you watch that show, the the last season, you can the writing starting to get kind of uh, bad. So he, I think he made a good. You decision. did him. I think in that last year, didn't you have the uh, the soup Nazi episode, for instance? The, the, uh, Super Nazi, no, that was like the middle of the series. No, no, I think it was either second to last year or the last year. Uh, the last year I didn't feel was that bad. The final episode was horrible. That you was know. horrible. Yeah, yeah. No no one's ever had a good finale, have they, in a long run? MASH had a decent one, I think. MASH had a decent one. Uh, you know, ending them is, ending a series is always the most difficult thing because there are a couple of things that they play into your decisions that you make on that show not the least of which is suppose a couple of years from now we want to bring it back so do we end it in a way that we can't bring it back <laughs> you know you can't so, kill everyone off <laughs> so they always do it in some way that eh, well maybe they can bring it back you know uh, you know like they brought back what was that one with the guy who's gay and the straight woman uh, I can't remember Oh, Will and Grace. Will and Grace, yeah. I mean, that thing what came back, and it did a couple of seasons, actually. You know, so it's uh, you know, it's a uh, um, who knows why people uh, suddenly decide to leave these series when they're successful. Um, it's stupid. It's really stupid. Well, I guess he McLean Stevenson was probably offered his own sitcom. Said, "Yeah, I, I'm tired of being a supporting character, but uh, he, no. well, they went with the money as opposed to the funny." Okay, folks, I'm be here all week. Um, uh, no, it, it, he went with the moment money. I'm sure. I'm sure there was a, there were offers, and yeah. he, you get this idea when the offers start coming in, right? That you're bigger than the show you're on, and he wasn't bigger than Mash. I mean, there. I think if anybody came out of Mash a winner, it was Alan Alda. Uh, am I, I got the name right? No, not Alan. Yeah, Alda. yeah. Okay. Alan Alda. Alan yeah. Alda. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, you know, he was. Uh, I think he had a very successful career after Mash, but he was the only one. Wayne Rogers is, you know, selling coins on uh, Fox, <laughs> you know. So. I think he died. But I, did he, he die? Did he die? 
I think so. He was. Yeah, uh, yeah I think he was really. He was really good at uh, stock guys. The yeah, stock he, well, he or he says he was. He was one of those guys yeah. who claimed he was just great at stocks, and so he made a living out of out of pushing that sort of image. But uh, it didn't necessarily work, you know. But uh, that who, was a well written show. A mash. Yeah. Yeah. Well written. Yeah. And that it, uh, you know, why it lasted? It was because it was set in a period, and and shows like Cosby didn't do that well in syndication because they looked dated. And right, right. Nothing looks dated if you're doing something from the past. Right. Um. Uh. But yet, you know, Mash. Do you see Mash anywhere? It must run some places. You know, but it's well, like maybe on, it's had its course. But, well, uh, it's like on one, I think it's like on one of those channels that every TV station has sub channels. Now, they didn't have it years ago, but because of the new digital, they have sub channels. They have like up to four sub channels, and they can broadcast on those sub channels. So most sta- most stations have at least one other station, and so they go to these syndicated people who syndicate old TV shows. And they put them on those channels, and that's where MASH is. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, you'll hear your TV station occasionally say, oh, go to my TV or whatever the thing's called, you know, on channel 847 on your cable, right? So you go there, and there's uh, MASH and, you know, a bunch of old shows. So that's where I've, I've seen MASH. But I don't see it on, like, TV station saying late night, oh, let's run MASH. And I would say out of that show, Alan Alda was the only one that had a career after it ran. Well, no, Jamie Farr didn't. Uh, the guy who... Loretta played, Swit. Loretta Swit had a minor career after that. Then her looks gave way. Uh, and I'm Radar. Sure, Radar, yeah. Yeah, he didn't have much of a, you know, uh, career, uh, you know, Alan Alda had a good career afterwards. You know, he he, and I I don't know if that is a is a, a process of having a good agent or just having the the desire to succeed. You know, so I don't know. But uh, uh, what what were some of the worst sitcoms of all time? That that's a good question. Uh, my mother the car. <laughs> well, I, have you ever seen my mother the car? I no, no, I just heard about it. <laughs> this was Jerry Van Dyke as the son, and his mother dies and is recreated, or what is it? What's the word you use? Reincarnated. Reincarnated. I don't. Ha- I have no grasp of the English language lately, since I I've been taking <laughs> these these pills for my neuropathy. It kind of makes me forget words. Um, but she's reincarnated as a car, played by Anne. The voice is done by Anne Southern, a great old uh, uh, movie actress, uh, who had a show called The Anne Southern Show. Uh, and it was, it wasn't terrible. It just was such a stupid idea. Yeah, that horrible. People, and people made fun of it. My mo- my mother, the car. Oh boy, uh, that's uh, that's stupid. But it wasn't as bad as people think it was. Um, to me, you know what it was bad? I, I just found it the lowest form of television ever was the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> and it was huge. <laughs> it was huge. No critic in America liked that show. <laughs> okay? No, That's no. when we found out how stupid America was. <laughs> yeah, but it became a sensation. But I always thought, my, you know, Beverly Hillbillies, which was, by the way, originally, Todd, I saw the pilot. The original title was Hillbillies of Beverly Hills. Oh. Yeah. But it was Beverly Hillbillies, and it was a terrible show. Just a terrible show. <laughs> and it ran for close to 10 years, I think. I think uh, easily it ran for 10 years. And, uh, and nobody left that show, by the way. You know, uh, because they were. I think everybody knew that was pretty much it for them. Yes, although I think. Yeah, well, uh, when did you ever hear of Buddy Bear Jr. again? 
Max Bear. Max he was Bear the, Jr. Uh, Excuse me, son Buddy. of a heavyweight uh, boxer. Well, Max Bear's brother was Buddy Bear. That's why I said Buddy Bear. Uh, okay. Max Bear Jr. When did you ever hear of him again? And I couldn't even get his name right. You know, yeah. Donna Douglas. Reed. Donna Douglas was uh, was Ellie May, right? Right, and when, then there was Irene Ryan was Granny. Yeah, she was a, an old Broadway actress. Uh, and Buddy Epson. Buddy Epson had a, uh, he had a lame detective show after. Barnaby, Barnaby Jones, I think it was called. Barnaby Jones, yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah, but he also, you know, he, he did, I, did, he did Davy Crockett before he did the Beverly Hillbilly. Yeah, he did. Dave, he was Davy Crockett's friend. Before that, he was in movies. He was very big in movies. Do you know? Do you know what his claim to fame is? No. He was supposed to be the Tin Woodman in The Wizard of Oz. Wow! But he put the makeup on, and it turned out he was allergic to to aluminum paint, or the paint they were putting on to make him look aluminum, right? Or look mm -hmm. tin, and he he wound up in the hospital. It was so bad the allergy, uh, and they had to replace him with uh, Jack Haley. Uh, you know. Well, he was uh, he probably know this theory. Buddy Epson is <laughs> an old Bob Rubin bit. Buddy Epson's got a big head. Yeah. And Oops, I just lost him. Boy, well, let's see if we can get him back here. Here we go. Let's see here. Uh, Larry is unavailable. Let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, see, Skype really sucks. It really does. Okay. Skype sucks. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, here's a good trivia question for you. Because I mentioned Jack Haley. What do Jack Haley and Judy Garland, who is the other star in The Wizard of Oz, have in common? I have no idea. Well, her daughter married Jack Haley's son. Oh, really? Yes. Jack Haley Jr. Yeah, see? There's some trivia you didn't know, okay? Do you know? Oh, that's old Hollywood trivia. That's really old Hollywood trivia. Yeah. <laughs> what do they have in common? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I had some other trivia question like that, but I can't remember what it is now because my brain is mush today. Uh, but there was a there was a commonality of people who were in the Wizard of Oz who wound up in some other picture together, uh, but I can't remember now, so I won't bring it up. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, but uh, other series that were terrible. Uh, I thought I Dream of Jeannie was terrible. Yeah, might have stayed on because she was hot. Because she was hot, yeah. Have you seen her today, by the way? Oh, she's 90. She, yeah, yeah. She's on her, like, 20th facelift. Yeah, uh, it, she's had a few, I think. <laughs> you know how you can tell bad facelifts after a while? Their cheeks get hollow. There's that line that goes from the mouth all the way up to, like, the, uh, the, t the top of the chin. Yeah, yeah, definitely doesn't look normal. Yeah. And, and that's that's from too much plastic surgery, and she's obviously had it, you know. Uh, but uh, in her day, she was hot, you know. And like you, she's from San Francisco. But it was a stupid sitcom, you know. The trouble is, until we, for years, we got nothing with stupid sitcoms. They, they were all kind of goofy, you know. And my father hated them, and I'll tell you why why he hated them. He said, in all of these sitcoms, Dad is always the stupid one. Dad's an idiot. Yeah. Dad's an idiot. Yeah. Mom is the, the, the stabilizing force in the family. And he felt that really presented a bad image of the American father. And he, he was right. right. He was absolutely right. Nobody ever complains about that because it was something that was happening to guys and not to women. You know. They say, oh, well, the trouble with uh, I Love Lucy is uh, she was a woman portrayed as being goofy and dopey. Well, come on, it's a sitcom, you moron. <laughs> everybody's dopey in it. That's what they do with Amos and Andy. They say, oh, oh, you know, everybody there is either goofy or they're conniving or they're 
whatever. And I go, yes, you know why? Because it's a sitcom. If you did it about white guys and you had exactly the same characters, in fact, that would be fun to do. Let's do a white version of Amos and Andy. Um, If you did it the same way with the same component of characters, you'd go, oh, that's funny. You know? I, uh, I and I talked to black people who loved Amos and Andy. Because I think from what I read that that they that show didn't present black people in a racist light. It was actually kind of positive. But. Well, I mean, you had you had you know you yes you had the kingfish who was a conniving guy, and you had a, a, a Andy who was kind of dumb. Okay, and then you had a, a, a Amos who ran a, a cap company and was an entrepreneur. Okay, and then you had lawyers, and then you had doctors, and every profession that you can imagine who were all in that sh- presented in that show, so that there was a wide swath of of, of black experience it, it, done on that show, and yet everybody, went, oh, that that show was racist. I was. Oh watching. yeah. It'd be- killed today if you even brought it up I was watching some show on ABC uh, on I can't remember where and they brought up Amos and Andy and they said yeah it was thrown off of ABC because blah 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 and I'm going it was never on ABC it was on CBS it was on CBS because it had been a long running radio program and, and they went and tried to do Amos and Andy the TV show there's a pilot of it using Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, who were the creators and played Amos and Andy on radio, who happened to be white, okay? And they did them in blackface, trying to do the show. And they all decided they did it because that's what CBS wanted them to do. And then they did it, and they finally went to CBS and said, this does not work, okay? (laughs) We tried this in the movies, and it doesn't work. We need to hire black actors to play the parts. And virtually, that show gave just hundreds of black actors jobs. What was wrong with that? Yeah. You know? Uh, And uh, on radio, it was the same thing. They were white, but every other actor on that show was a black actor. And they were happy to get the work. And they weren't being treated... A lot of the characters weren't what you call the black stereotype. And I, I just always was bothered by the way... Amos and Andy is remembered. And yet when I talk to black people who grew up during that time, I say, what do you think of Amos and Andy? And they say, I love that program. And they love <laughs> there that. you go, yeah. They love that program because precisely their race was being represented. Okay? That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. But, yeah. yeah, the uh, first 10 years of TV, I mean, who was the first known black person on TV. Uh, was it Rochester? Well, when you're talking about a black person on a regular show, that would probably, I would say it would have to be Eddie Rochester, Anderson. Uh, but uh, the first person, black person, ever to have a show. Uh, you know who was the first person ever to have a show? Mm. That I can remember? It was, uh, it was 15 minutes yeah. along every night. Five nights a week. Was it a singer? Yep. Uh, I would guess Matt King Cole. Absolutely. Yeah. He had a show every night. But when it comes to a sitcom, uh, that goes to what's her name? Oh, God, my mind's a blank now. Um, Oh, God. She did a a show about a nurse. Um, Oh, uh, Diane Carroll. Diane Carroll. Uh, She was the first black performer to head up and be the star of outside of Amos and Andy we, that's an exception to to be the star of a uh, of a of a sitcom so that was uh mid 60s late 60s yeah it had a name of what uh, her name the name of her character is the is the title it didn't last long it lasted only 3 episodes or something like that and then the network said gee this isn't going because she's black and nobody wants to watch a black person you know Today, it's if you're white, it's hard to get a job as a lead in a series. Yeah, it's, you know, it's gone the other way, you know. And you know, mm-hmm. the first, uh, I think, in a uh, Bill Cosby was in I Spy. That was pretty. That was like '65, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah, but he wasn't the star. He was the. He wasn't the star, star, but he's kind of the co. Him and Robert called. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and I think the networks fought against that, but the producers said, "No, it's a good idea," and they did it, and it worked. You know, because I mean, it, to begin with, Cosby is so likable. You know, uh, maybe not today, <laughs> but, <laughs> but in those days, he was one of the most likable people in America. Hey, listen, Those are I, the people that always have the darkest lives, right? Yes, exactly. Well, we've had a good time with Larry Bubbles Brown, and I say <laughs> it's time to call it quits for this episode. Yes, we've been canceled. Okay, Larry. All right. See you next week. You got it. Okay. Bye-bye. This is GetNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh boy, doesn't like uh, doesn't like overmodulating too well. There, you hear hear where that went bad? Yeah. Okay. Well, the hell with it. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, let me see here. There's nobody waiting to be on the show tonight, so maybe I'll just say to hell with it. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, that uh, good. Uh, uh, well, uh, some uh, Josh Wheeler just came online here. Uh, so I could probably talk to him, I guess. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, I mean, lately, God, the numbers last night of people listening to this show were just pathetic. Just absolutely pathetic. If we don't start, you know, I I don't know what to do to this show to get people to want to listen to it more. Maybe there's just nothing to talk about. I don't know. Anyway, there are two people here waiting to come online. So why don't we just uh, why don't we just uh, uh, go to our <laughs> there they are uh, hello Josh hello uh, Jeff how are you and let's see here Vernon's coming in here uh, he should be here any second now uh, I guess I pushed the button there uh, yeah he should be coming in here yeah there he is I'm on are you okay uh, uh, Vernon? Vernon? Can you hear us, Vernon? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I, I don't know. He seems to be having some problem. Wait a minute. Oh, there the you go. Plan. Turning off the TV set. Right? Yeah. What were you, what were I you, did. What were you watching? Uh, I was watching uh, the Weather Channel and that hurricane that's about to hit Louisiana as, as a category this was a question I wanted to ask tonight uh, and uh, I was thinking about this earlier today I'm watching MSNBC and it's wall-to-wall coverage of what's going on in Afghanistan mm. right yeah. and I'm thinking what's a more important story as an example that hurricane which may hit you soon Okay, hmm. or Afghanistan. The number of people who are getting poisoned by ivermectin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or. Uh, uh, how about how about uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the the whole COVID situation. I mean, wouldn't we be happy just to lose fifteen people in a given day? You know. So I'm I I you know I don't, I don't think we are putting our everything in perspective. Yes. Afghanistan is an important situation, but it doesn't need all the coverage that it's getting. Instead, the things that are really have a good chance of killing you right now are being not getting that same coverage right now. Am I wrong about this, Josh? Yeah, I mean, I I guess I would probably not agree. I mean, the Afghanistan situation is the biggest story. I mean. The hurricane thing will affect people in that area, and they will talk oh, that Okay, death. but how about COVID? It, there are going to be you know. more deaths tomorrow from COVID, or today from COVID than, uh, than deaths in, in Afghanistan that we had. Well, I mean, that's maybe true, but I think COVID has been pretty well covered. You know, I mean, I, I think... Well, don't you think that this Afghanistan know. story is being over-covered? I don't know that it's... It, it could possibly be overcovered, but I mean, we're talking about one week versus we've had to listen to this 
COVID thing for a year and a half, and that's, the that's, Afghanistan situation is pretty fluid. That's true, but it, it, all and, I'm saying is know, we, we, we don't seem to put things in proportion to their their uh, their consequences to us, okay? So, I, I don't know. You know, that's just me. I'm a naysayer. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't care for weather or storm or hurricane coverage or whatever that is the most ridiculous i mean i i can't stand any of that and well before anyone chimes in with well, have you ever lived in a hurricane yes i have as a matter of fact yeah. i did live in florida and went through it and oh we got a hurricane here in new york just like all the rest of them it was a bunch of huff and puff and puff and then as soon as it gets land it fucking rains a lot now i understand there's <laughs> one every once in a while that you know <clears throat> certainly causes a lot of damage okay so take your shit and leave or don't take your shit and leave do what i mean there's a reason i don't live i was, I was trying to think about this the other day is there anywhere that you can live in the united states where you aren't subject to some kind of meteorological problem or or a geological problem I mean, you get tornadoes in the in the Midwest. You get hurricanes in Florida, and the West Coast you get earthquakes. Well, you forget about the New Madrid Fault in uh, Missouri. Yeah, but that's uh, that hasn't blown. You no, know? but they they've been saying that it's about to for the last forty years. No, for the last couple of hundred days, and it was going to. When's the last time it went? Eighteen something, I think. Yeah, was it bad? Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> did it make all the news channels? <laughs> you know, did they talk about it for weeks? No. Well, I, suppose, supposedly, where I live, we should if if it does decide to shake, rock, and roll, uh, we would feel it here in Louisville, but probably not have substantial mm -hmm. damage. But we would probably be the recipients of people who are injured in that area because. St. Louis would probably not be able to handle it because it's right there where the fault is. Yeah. And the next biggest city would be Louisville or Nashville. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You know, so, I mean, but all I'm saying is, is that I, when I was studying journalism, uh, broadcast journalism, I was told that proximity is everything. In other words, people only really care about the news in their back door, outside their back door. So if there's a hurricane coming and you live in Florida, then you care about it. But if there's a hurricane coming and you live in New York, eh, we really don't give a shit. You know? A shit. you know, and the same thing is true of, of things that happen in New York, you know. Yes, crime rate is up. Well, it doesn't affect me in Des Moines, you know. So, I mean, when you turn on these news channels that play to the whole country, they're not servicing the mentality of smaller parts of the country. Uh, Plus, lot, channels, hmm? channels like MSNBC, they run 24-7. They've got to fill that air with something. <laughs> well, and they do. A lot of flotsam and jetsam, you know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of nothing. So, what have you. Anyway, I've, I've done my griping for tonight, okay? Mm. You know. Hello, Patrick. Hi. What did you say? What was that that came out of you? I said hi. Oh, I think it went, ah. No, hi. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. he say nay? Yeah. Did he take some in for the prevectin? <laughs> right. Oh. Are, are, pe are people actually taking it? Yeah. They are. Yeah. Boy, that's interesting. Because, I mean, come on. Just because on TV your favorite news channel tells you that ivermectin or uh, somebody on it, it's not, Fox isn't saying it as a general rule, are they? It's just their hosts, like Hannity and so on, are claiming that Laura this Ingram. Is, Laura Ingram, that this is. And, and don't they realize how many people they're killing by doing that? Where's the conscience? <laughs> you know? I haven't heard about uh, very many deaths, but there are people spending, like uh, one story I saw today, a guy in Oklahoma took the injectable kind of ivermectin that's intended for cows. <laughs> he drank it and spent, he, he, he drank it and spent nine days in the hospital recovering. Oh boy. 
Well, you know, this is a, this is the Darwinian theory at work. <laughs> you know, we're weeding out the stupid. So. Yeah, there's no cure for stupid. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> yeah, ivermectin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway. Well, I'm through talking. I have nothing else to talk about. How about you, Josh? You usually have something to bring up. Yeah, I mean, look, I I spent a good portion of the day talking to Kevin and Patrick about the Afghan Afghanistan deal. I mean, yeah. it's obviously was the big story when we talked last Friday, and uh, hmm. the story really hasn't gotten any smaller. It's only gotten bigger, and the situation has only gotten worse. I mean, I you know, this has been turned into a real uh a real fuck up you know well I has mean, has, has biden turned into a to, into a, a loser on this deal no actually i think he's uh doubled down and saying i'm going to get the americans out of there and then you taliban can deal with isis k hmm. well I mean, they, I... well they didn't say that last hour because in the last hour they flew drones over isis k and unloaded on them yeah. so apparently I mean, look I mean, yeah. on this deal here in particular, yeah, I mean, I I don't think he's handled it well at all. I mean, look, I voted for him, and uh, I'm a supporter of his. I was early on when you guys, you know, didn't think he could win. You know, I told Patrick the other day, I, I like Joe Biden before most people probably even cared to know who he was, you know, even though he'd run for president a couple times before. I mean, I've always liked Joe Biden, but... Look, on this deal right here, I mean, I'm not going to deny that the situation was pretty bad and there were a few things, you know, that he was handed kind of out of his control and all that, but I'm not going to take a lot of excuses in this. I mean, this this has been fucked up pretty bad. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of it's his fault. I mean, I don't have a problem with the wanting, the wanting to withdraw from Afghanistan. I mean, that's a that's legitimate... Fair political and military position um in fact i would probably agree with it really you know what i'm saying but that doesn't mean you have to fuck it up while you do it and i think that's what's happened here i mean and now you know again i'll be brutally honest with you 13 14 you know american 15 whatever it is you know american service members are dead and a lot more are injured maybe pretty seriously i guess and I'm not gonna say that's his fault, you know, or I blink like he's personally responsible. No, that it's an act of a madman. But he put these people in a pretty bad position, and I think he needs to uh, he needs to lose a little sleep over it for sure. Well, was there a better way of getting out of it? Obviously, I think there was. Yes, I mean, no, I, I, I don't. I don't understand. This was going to I mean, happen they, no matter they, when. No matter when we did it, this was going to happen. The fall of Afghanistan might have happened, but this chaos on the way out the door didn't have to happen. I mean, if the, if the U.S. military by now cannot tactically withdraw from a theater of war, then they have serious fucking problems that need to be fixed. Well, here's the... You here's cannot the, tactically withdraw from a theater of war that you have owned for 20 years you're fucking fired. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's that's that. I mean, well, why did we wait to? What I don't didn't get, and I haven't been able to get, is why did we wait to this week? All right, uh, to to suddenly get these guy these people out of there. I mean, shouldn't those people at the embassy have been gone out of that country a month ago? They didn't anticipate the that's Taliban being yeah. as quick and taking over places. Well, but you have to assume that might happen. That's always a possibility. I, I, I can't believe that voting because they have to have intelligence on the ground yeah. knowing what's going on. Uh, Patrick? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Josh and I have been discussing this. And if there was intelligence on the ground, they had to have known what the weaknesses were of the people that they've been training for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you've got the Joint Chiefs, and I hold General Milley responsible as well. And I think, I honestly believe 
that the State Department and the uh, Department of Defense are giving Biden half-assed advice because there's no way that Biden, I don't think, could fuck this up as bad as he has on his own without being given this information. And the thing is, we've seen several times over the last week, he goes out and says one thing, and then his Secretary of Defense or the uh, Secretary of State, that clown Blinken, uh, goes against what he said. Oh no, because Biden came out one day earlier in the week and said, Al Qaeda is not in Afghanistan. And then an hour later, Blinken comes on and says, yeah, we know they're there. Well, are they intentionally giving him bad advice so that he can fuck this shit up? And the thing is, you, nobody can lay this at the feet of Trump anymore because it's a new administration, new cabinet, new people, and these are all the people Biden picked. So it's up to Biden now, much the same as what Obama had done and Trump, to start fucking rolling heads. If you fucked up and you gave me bad shit, you're gone. And the first one would be Blinken. And I'd, and I'd get rid of uh, Millie as well. I think Millie's a fucking clown and a disgrace in a uniform. Okay. He um, certainly has not handled anything well in the last year and a half. I mean, you know, the, the failed response to Capitol, the, the shit with Trump, this shit here. I mean, look, that, maybe he's had a nice lifelong service record or whatever, but he's obviously reached a point where, I mean, I, I wouldn't rely on this guy. And I mean, look, I understand, you know, Biden's point about, well, you know, the commanders this, said that, and they told me this, and they told me, look, look, I, like I told Patrick, I don't pay the president to listen to the commanders. I pay the president to make the commanders listen to him. I, I mean, well, we don't, we don't, never, we don't know truth. But, tr but I'm just telling you, okay. Yeah. As a military historian, just doing whatever the commanders want to do has never done anybody in charge any fucking good. <laughs> well, let me just say, <laughs> so mean, far, never. let me say that so far, Biden is a disappointment to me. You know, I think he has handled this badly. I agree, it was dropped in his lap. Okay. Uh, this deal with the Taliban was made under Trump, and it was dropped in his lap. But once somebody throws the ball to you, you got to throw it to whatever base it's got to be thrown to. You know, you can't just stand there and go, "What do I do with the ball?" You know. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing. I will give Biden credit for moving the date from May to August, and what that time should have been. It's his staff that he himself hired on. That should have been an extra almost three months that they could have planned for a better exit. And they did. Well, keep in mind, keep in mind that one of the things Trump did before he left office is he put a lot of his loyalists in some of these bureaucratic positions and they began stalling when the new administration came in so that they couldn't do the things that they should have been doing because these Trump loyalists were stalling that shit from the get-go. Well, then you, then you move the, the date back further from August to October. Or so, I mean, the, the bottom line is you have a new Secretary of Defense. Isn't he in charge of the people under him? Yes, but the new Secretary of Defense cannot just come in and clean house and start from square one and get everything done. They, they have a, a tendency to rely on people that are there that they think they can trust. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes time for them to learn that they can't trust some of these bastards and to get rid of them. Well, then they should have, like I said, mm -hmm. they could have moved this. And I think a lot of, I, I, I do believe that uh, these people are, have been feeding Biden bad information. And I mean, I agree with Josh that the buck does stop with, with Biden, that, that it's him who is supposed to be running the show and not to show running him, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I mean, you've got the 
chairman of the Joint Chiefs, that guy got a spine that's worse than mine. And that motherfucker trying to run the military gave me a fucking break. Yeah, uh, t- uh, uh, Tony. And I'm going to agree with you, Alex. And, and, uh, for the fact that, too, like even Josh was saying and, and Patrick, we were there for 20 years. The timing is such a bad timing on the essence, too. We're two weeks away from September 11th. I mean, you know, it doesn't, it's just like we're there 20 years. You know what? He's trying to get COVID passed with the shots. Just hold the guys there till next year. Is it really going to kill us to keep them there longer? Well, it, it, the deal wasn't made. There was a deal made with the Taliban by the Trump administration that we were going to get out by a certain date certain. That was May 1st, I believe. Uh, it, 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 we weren't going to meet that date because it was too soon for this new administration yeah. to deal with, so they pushed it up to uh, to the end of August. Uh, I'm, I, I, I don't disagree with that, but on the other hand, we should have been, from the very beginning, started shredding the documents and getting everybody out of that State Department. At that uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call it the, the embassy uh, because we knew that they would have to go anyway and better to get them out earlier than later and what we did is we started getting them out too late and now we're hustling to get them out now there are some people in Afghanistan they also want to get out but they're not they weren't working with the embassy they're American contractors and so on and so forth and I think it's their job to get their ass to the airport, okay? We can't be responsible for everybody that's over there on business, okay? We can be, be responsible for everybody that went over there because we sent them there. And we said, you got to do a job here, you know. And I think you also do it in, in a logical order. You get the, uh, you, we, we started taking the troops out. We shouldn't have taken the troops out. We should have moved the Americans out first and then had all the military hop on planes. I mean, what, what, what was that? Why, why did we suddenly downsize our military before we got out? Yeah, we need- I don't know. I mean, look, I, I think a lot of that is the president's decision because he does have sort of a hard on for leaving Afghanistan. Again, yeah, which is a perfectly hey, look, I think there is legitimate a, y- 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 policy. There isn't, a, there isn't a Democrat in this country, and there isn't a Republican who doesn't think we should be getting out of there. Okay, that's not the re- that's not the argument here. Uh, the argument isn't how, wh- uh, rather what, but how. Uh, you know, but well, I think that right. most most Republicans say they want it out of Afghanistan. We want it out of Afghanistan. Every president who has been handed this hot potato has wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but they never did anything about it. You know, right? And look, I mean, like I said, that's a that's a legitimate policy uh, directive from the president. That's certainly his prerogative, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But the implementation of that policy, the carrying out of that process which he is also in charge of, has not been done well. And I I don't care too much for the reasoning or what I would call an excuse is, well, you know, but but, but we, we had an agreement with the Taliban or whatever. Well, fuck the Taliban. <laughs> the fuck well, I mean, the here, fuck here, here, here's, the, here's the deal, too. I mean, you have to hand it to Trump. He said, we're getting out of there. Okay, we'll give him that much. But he didn't have a plan on how he was going to do it. There was no plan. He simply left office without, he didn't have any plan at that point, and it was handed to Biden, who then was handed a withdrawal with no plan. But yeah, that I mean, but that should have been the first thing on his plate the minute he got in yeah, office. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I said. No, I disagree. I disagree. The first thing on Biden's plate was COVID. You could handle COVID and that at the same time, Vernon. Yeah, and that, he, he did I'm not there. saying you there, can't walk and chew gum. No, but they're two entirely. We entire, don't know that he wasn't doing both. They're two entirely different issues with two entirely different solutions. Huh? Then you better not be president if you can't handle more than one thing. Okay. I'm not saying. I'm not saying you can't walk and chew gum at the same time. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is maybe we don't know what all was going on. 
I believe he was doing stuff behind the scenes, and they do that stuff. Exactly. It's covert. It's covert stuff that they don't. Exactly. They don't tell nobody about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But and I, I don't care how he prioritizes. I mean, I don't care how they time manage their their day to go about figuring this out. I mean, whatever. But regard, you know. But they didn't do a good job at it. I mean, I don't care no, if they spent the all their day on it or half their day on it or the ten minutes problem. a day, whatever. The main problem I mean, they that didn't, I see is they didn't do a very good job. The main problem was optics. It's not that they weren't doing anything. It isn't that they weren't doing what they should have been doing. It just turned out to be some terrible optics. Yes, I agree. I mean, and I, it I, probably wasn't. It probably wasn't a good job either in some in some aspects of it. I mean, like I said, I don't care how they came up with the plan or whatever. It it wasn't a good plan. <laughs> Look, I I, I mean, th I think you know, they. They didn't do a good job. I mean, that's just that. I mean, if they came in and they said this is unrealistic and we can't do it right or anything, and then they said, yeah, but Trump you know something? This, then he would have been care. accused of not getting out. You know, he would have been yelled at. The Republicans would have been yelling about, we made a deal with the Taliban. We have to get out of there. So, I mean, well, there was no way well, Biden could win on this Trump deal. Also, said ISIS was gone and the sure and shit we all knew it wasn't gone. Yeah. Yeah, he well, said, I can tell you. I can, I can just tell you before Patrick talks that if I were the president of the United States, and I had to get yelled at by Republicans to not get fifteen American Marines killed, I just have to get yelled at by Republicans. Yeah, that's that's correct. Yes, I Patrick. Mean, yes, that's just the way that it would have to go. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, uh, I lost my train. Um, Boy, you're getting as bad as I am. Just, just say that you agree with everything I said. I, I was, um, <laughs> I, I, I was gonna bounce off of something Kevin said. Now I, I lost it. Fuck him. But <laughs> my question <laughs> is, when the, up, when the fuck are we gonna get a good president? You know, we have been going through hell, and and this time. <laughs> It isn't that Biden's a terrible person or a horrible person like Trump was or a venal person like Trump was. But we all yeah. know in the front he was a placeholder. That Biden was a placeholder. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's coming? And they let Saran Saran out. I mean, what is well, going well, on? Sir, Han, sir, it's not Saran Saran. He's not what's a he rat. Needed? What's his Come name again? Sirhan Sirhan. That's it, yeah. They let him out, Alex. I almost fell on the Saran, floor. Saran Saran, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what is, he killed Kennedy and they letting him out? What is going on with this law system, really? Come but on. But did he really kill Kennedy? Anyway, uh, Patrick. Yeah, what I, what I meant to say earlier was with, with Trump, um, none of this can be laid at his feet anymore. Again, because once the administration came in with Biden, moving that date and all, like Kevin was saying, behind the scenes, all of that shit had to be done. And Biden had no problem getting rid of just about everything that Trump did as far as executive orders. So for anybody on the Democratic side to be complaining or saying anything about Trump with this clusterfuck, they're full of shit because Biden has control of everything, or should have. Well, my question is, if Trump were still president, and now he was faced with this and the deal he had made, what do you think would be going on right now? It'd still be the world's largest clusterfuck and even more of a clusterfuck. And I would blame, it would, and I would blame Trump. Yeah. I mean, just like I'm blaming Biden. But what I can tell you for sure would be happening Mm -hmm. is Democrats would be losing their fucking mind and yep. they would certainly be yelling a lot louder about it than they are now. Uh, Which is a political reality of where we live. I mm -hmm. get it. Right. But I'm just saying that's what would happen. And look, I'm not like, oh my God, Biden should resign and we should just remove him from, I mean, come on. I, I said he fucked this up. I mean, he's done really nice Job. There are Republicans who are saying exactly yeah. that, Josh. There are Republicans who are saying exactly what you just said. And of course, Biden they're going fucked to. up, and he should resign. They're going so, to. Which say is that. a totally stupid statement to make. Just like 
there were a lot of Democrats that wanted Trump to resign for this, that, or the other. I mean, that's a game that they all play. They all I'll start yelling that. that. It's just At their all? positioning. Yeah. Everybody yeah. quit. It's, it's almost like clockwork. You can expect that's what the opposition is going to say. Yeah. Well, and I don't subscribe to that. I mean, I, I think I've been, I think by now, you know me well enough to know, you know, I'm pretty fair about this kind of stuff. Like I said, Biden messed this up really bad. Has nothing to do with a lot of other really nice things that he's done. Mm -hmm. I voted for him. I'm not upset that I voted for him or ashamed that I voted for him. I well, mean, what, what were you? What, no, was, what was your I mean, What was your choice? Okay. Well, I get that, but I but I'm just saying. I mean, uh, you, I, I'm saying you you could have a head coach whose team went 12 and I mean, four and one of those I, four games yeah, that they lost they got beat terrible and you're like man he had a terrible the day the person well, i feel that's the way it is the person i feel sorry for here is patrick because uh he couldn't bring himself to vote for biden either so he had to vote for i don't know some granola cruncher who was running for president you know uh, and, and i mean let me just say this with josh too he's right josh i think was the only one on the panel for the year before the election that kept yapping about Biden and saying that he's gonna get the nomination. And so Josh is not coming from a standpoint that I would, that people could accuse me. I mean, hell, I'm defending the, the guy now, partially. You know, but uh, I, I don't think there's anybody that been on this panel that have a more clear view than Josh would, because I mean he was the one. Like I said, Biden's going to get the nomination, and I think every one of us laughed and said, "No way." Not and true. Get the nomination and not true. Well, I figured he not had true. the best I thought, shot. I thought Biden was going to get the nomination from the get-go. And I think I pretty much felt that. You know, the, that too. you know. The, I mean, I, I I certainly couldn't see Bernie Sanders getting it. It, it just wasn't in the cards. Um, but uh, the fact was that, you know, who do, who, you know, you're right, he is a placekeeper, uh, Kevin. I mean, he's, he's there taking care of. I mean, of that's, you know, that's okay. I mean, this, I'm just saying, you know, this, this situation here has been, it's, it's been messed up pretty bad. You know, I mean, I thought the press conference the other day, well, it wasn't it was pathetic. very well done. It was pathetic. I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't care much for that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I found parts of it difficult to listen to. To be honest with you, I mean, I just, I mean, it, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think from the start of this, you know, he hasn't done a very good job, and I would have had higher expectations. I mean, you know, and <clears throat> honestly, I think. Um, they knew this shit was going to happen, and he just decided, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite the bullet, and this shit's going to happen. We'll deal with it as it goes along." I honestly think that that's what the way he took this. Well, my they, they, knew, if he they, did. they prepared for it, and they yeah. they set it up, and they knew that okay, you know, we're going to set this date. Uh, this is what they said we were going to do. We decided we were going to do it. They prepared as much as they could covertly beforehand. And they said, okay, let's push the button. We're going to go for it. And what happens is going to happen. We're going to have to put up with the heat. Mm -hmm. And they went ahead and did it. And they're going through with it. You know, he's, he's sticking to his guns. i got to say that much. He's got balls. There was no perfect way to execute this. There was no perfect was way no to do it. There was no perfect way to execute it. And anybody that would have done it would have run into the same shit. And I think that you know, I got the only thing I got to hand it to him for is he's 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 taking the heat. He's he's standing up there and taking the heat. He's not telling them anybody. Uh, well, it's this. And well, it's that. He's saying the and, buck stops here. Here we're going. We're he's going also through with it. also under in Trump. Press, we were in the used press to, conference. He said we will find you and we will we will take you. Yeah, out. You know, well, there's nothing what? wrong with they that. Launched airstrikes against ISIS K this evening. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got to hand it to him for that much. Well, I said, as I said last night, we could want them. We could say we were going to stone them back to the, we could bomb them back to the Stone yeah, Age. Yeah, but, right. But that would only that would only put there. them three years ahead of where they are right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants TV, cable, nothing. <laughs> they don't know how good it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you know. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it is what it is, and he's taking the heat, and I think he's going with it. So you know. Well, I mean, so you, you know, a, a, and a year from now we won't be talking about this. Trump, that's probably well, true. Well, Trump, Trump would have painted the whole thing as a big lie. You know, he was said, "Oh no, we're doing great over there," and no, you know that uh, we're, we've got it in hand and whatever. He would just lie his way through it. At least Biden is saying, "Okay, you know, I mean, we're we made some mistakes here." We're you getting know. hammered. We're going to hammer them back when we can. But I don't think know, I don't think the fact that ISIS K attacked our people uh, is his fault or his lack of duty. Okay, I think it was it, bound to happen. It was bound. There was bound to be Those something. Those fucking people are nuts. We were worried that it was going to be the Taliban, but the Taliban seems to be cooperating with us because they yeah. hate ISIS K. Yeah, you know. And I think they want us out of there without us keeping some troops in for the time being. They want to see us gone. Because they get their land back. They That's get right. their shit back, and right. then they can start doing all the bullshit that they want to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, we're only holding them up and standing in their way. Well, they just want to get us out of there. Well, they and, announced uh, today, they announced today uh, through one of their many people who speaks for them, that their intention is is that anybody who wants to leave uh, Iran, uh, rather Iran, Afghanistan, uh, can do so. You know, mm-hmm. that they're not going to stop people who want to leave. So let's see if that becomes true. I mean, I, I think that's what they say, but I don't know necessarily that that's what they do. In which case, I mean, are, in, I mean, in which not, case, we're not in, suddenly going to start trusting these fucking guys well i mean in which case I'm not. I mean, in which case if uh if uh if uh anybody who wants to leave afghanistan can leave it's going to be pretty terrible for the men over there because there'd be no women left to have sex with you yeah. know because every woman in that country will leave yes yeah. patrick uh the only issue i will take with what kevin said is I think it was done ass backward, and and we said it earlier in the show that it should have been the civilians out first, and then you get the military out. And then yes, there's very high likelihood that that military would have been attacked as it is now, but it, you wouldn't be worrying about civilians and all of that, because the military then at that point can do what they need to do and not worry about protecting civilians. And that's where I think this was fucked up and that it didn't have to be this way. It was done ass backwards. And as soon as Biden moved the date from May to August, they should have started withdrawing embassy people and civilians Mm -hmm. then so that once we hit this time, it's just the military and whatever equipment we wanted to get out and get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just think that that uh, that we we did it all wrong. But then a lot of the do- you know you got to remember the downsizing of the military in Afghanistan was started under Trump. So you know it wasn't like we we left everybody there and then got our people out first and then said, okay, the last military guy out the door, turn off the lights, you know? No, but if you, I, I, I take exception to that too, because if you, you turn the page there, what if we did get all the, the civilians out and then all we had back was military and them fuckers were building up even more and then decided, okay, now that's just the military, let's go all balls to the walls. And then we start losing our military, we could lose 50, 100, 1,000, whoever's there when these nutcases come out of the wall. Well, who we were. And now we to. lose a lot of our military guys. Do you think we'll get pissed off? You got to remember. Yes. In, in this I understand case. we can, we've yeah. got a better military, but when these guys come out of the, you know, out of the woodwork and start picking our guys off, and, and then all of a sudden we're reacting and we're losing more than 15 or 13, whatever it was, I can't remember, and we're losing more of our military, you woo. Be really pissed off. Yeah, but you got to you got to remember that, that to begin with, we're not really dealing with the ire of the tele- Taliban. The Taliban doesn't like any of this. That's I'm not even on. talking about the Taliban. I'm talking but, about the covert ISIS. People. Because we don't have enough military there, they were given the job <laughs> of the Taliban 
of keeping that uh, that uh, road to the airport open only to people who had to get out of the country. Yeah. And have you seen those guys? These are not exactly great military guys. No, they stand there slumped over with the gun. To in begin their with, head. they got AK forty sevens that they just got last week because it was left somewhere. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're wearing we're wearing fucking pajamas. And they've oh. got oh they they and no no military boots. They all wear tennis shoes. They all have Nikes on. I don't know. I think Nikes supplying the Taliban. They probably robbed them. Yeah, you know. Now they were left behind at Bagram Air Base. <laughs> yeah, but that's again that's part of the problem that all you know with all this being messed up is none of that kind of administrative or security responsibilities or anything like that should have been entrusted to those type of people. And I know people are going to say, well, we don't have enough troops to do that. Well, then you should have kept them there to do that. They should have tactically withdrawn from a theater of war like it was a theater of war mm-hmm. and not like they were all just going home on vacation. I yeah, mean, it almost looks know? like it almost looks like they may have used the civilians as sort of a cover to kind of keep them around and mix them in to try and, you know, and by the way, you know, it, yeah. there's no good answer. Patrick, you may not like Blinken or his law firm of Nod and uh, Winken. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, you may not like him, but the fact is that the guy we had before him as Secretary of State made this deal. Okay. Yeah, but, but the thing is, Alex, I understand... It's the executor. You can keep going back to what was. The point is what is yeah. and who is in charge. Well, the buck stops here. We're not here. worried about the past anymore. It, well, the buck stops here. You know, well, once I'm worried been, about the what, past. I'm worried about the past from this standpoint, Patrick. I'm worried about the past because of all the crap that went on the last year in 2020 under Trump, and we're still feeling the effects of that. So that's why I'm worried about the past because these nut jobs are still out there and they're going to still be doing this crap. Yeah. Where in our, our Afghanistan? In this country. In this country. Oh, I'm all, this, all this stuff that's going on down south, all of this, all this uh, COVID uh, it spikes and all that kind of stuff, it's because of the people who were following Trump and believe in his shit. But even oh. Trump, it, what, the other day, at a, at a speech, at a speech so told his people... Everybody they should go get a COVID shot, yeah, and they and, and they booed, booed him. They booed, they booed him. Crazy. Mm. Nuts. <laughs> That's because they're crazy nut jobs. Yeah, yeah. But they it's booed. They like booed they their hero. It anymore, what? It's like they can't believe their leader anymore. No, but they they booed their hero. That's the yeah. Thing I was like, what are they doing? It's it's it's. I'm telling you, this country's bizarre world. Really, I really am <laughs> believing it now. I'm like you. I don't even want to. I'm afraid to go anywhere other than my area. I think there's just nutville all over the place. We gotta pay people to take a COVID shot. Don't take it. I'm tired of people who beg. I'm tired of begging. Oh, I got very mad. I got very mad that they were giving a hundred dollars to yeah. everybody would get a COVID shot. You don't want a COVID shot? Okay, die. I mean, I don't want to be mean. Don't take it. I gotta. I gotta bribe these people to take it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I can, you know, accept, you know, that Trump supporters are, you know. Theologically, or, or you know, philosophically different from me, or whatever, and are maybe doing stupid things or whatnot. But I, I don't know that I'm. I can't use that as a reason for a poorly executed withdrawal from Afghanistan. Oh no, 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 we're no, no, we're not I, even beginning I, to say that. You know, I don't know that one has anything to do with the other, in my opinion. I mean, I, right. I don't care if Trump hmm. fucking massively screwed it up 15 minutes before he left office and then went out and told all the TV cameras that he fucking screwed it up and he did it on purpose. Yeah. Still doesn't yeah. Uh, doesn't change my mind at all. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, was, it was poorly executed and it continues to be. I mean, I think that's my problem with it. it when it first even uh, began to go sideways, they taken no real steps to yeah, mitigate those deep circumstances. In it now. It, it, he's playing this by the year now. You know, no, they gotta, just continue to screw Well, up. everything that he, you know, when he first got in office, I felt he was handling the COVID thing beautifully, you know? Mm-hmm. He was getting the shots into arms and everything. But all of a sudden, we get the Delta variant, and all of a sudden, we find out that enough, not enough people were getting those shots in arms. 
because the, the new variant was far more pernicious than the one that came before it. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he didn't count on all those people that didn't get it. I think we've got to have some tough laws in this country forcing people to get the, the, get the vaccine for the health and the welfare mm -hmm. of the country. I, I don't think you can anymore say, well, you know, uh, will you have the right not to take the shot if you don't want it? No, you don't, because you're going to get me sick. You're going to get Kevin sick. You're going to get Patrick sick. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, you don't have the right not to. You have the you have the you take the goddamn shot, put it in your arm. It's not going to hurt you. And unless you're a <laughs> Christian scientist and religiously don't believe in this, we can live with the Christian scientist not getting a shot in their arm because there aren't enough of them that it's going to make a difference. Yes, or we Pat. can use the Second Amendment and go out and pick off all the ones that don't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they need to start putting pressure on companies to start making them mandatory. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. I think if you start picking off these companies and making it mandatory, that that will be a good start. Yes, yes, Pat, uh, 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 Tony. Tony. I went to put my mother's number in at the bakery the other day. He has the lot of machine inside, so the bus, the 58 bus stop stops right in front of it. So this lady got off the bus and she had one of, the, she must have went to one of these rallies in the city that says no mandates for shots, like she was like, like a non-vaxxer so a guy pulls by and yells get the fucking shot <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean i, I, I just i i just find that it, the reason why we've got a real problem still and it's terrible out there yeah you know it's terrible not for you and me who've had a, all of us i think here mm -hmm. have had a had the shot so we're not in that category of people who are endangered i mean we could still mm -hmm. get it but it won't be that bad but nevertheless, I mean, they put, look, just the fact that these people are causing hospitals to overflow. Yeah. And I saw a thing today where it said that people at one hospital who had to go in there for like cancer operations and things like that, things to save their lives, can't get beds in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. You know, well, sense. who do we blame that on? We blame that on people who didn't get vaccinated. At least the FDA did approve it, like you said, Alex, which is a big step, I think. Well, they, they approved it before. I mean, the fact that they let everybody put it in their arm was okay, you know. But I think like Brian said, if the companies start cracking down, like you said, and the, te now the teachers union in New York, they have to get, if, if you're a teacher, you have to get vaccinated. No, so you have to get vaccinated or you get a stick stuck up your nose twice a week. Something like that. My well, I don't, I don't agree with that. Three times a week? Yes. I, I just, just test daily. Get the fuck out yeah, of in spite of the fact you love them tests, uh, Brian. Uh, I, 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 you know, how do I know that you, you know, you got your test yesterday, but today, how do I know you didn't catch COVID? Exactly. You know, I mean, the only safe way for us to protect people is is with uh, the vaccination, and it works. And nobody's growing a third arm. And you know nobody's freaking out over this stuff, and, uh, and spoons know. aren't sticking to your arm. It, well, oh, I saw that. Yes, yeah. somebody did that. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. No. Third arm would be good. Uh, yeah, uh, Jeff. I just want to remind everybody: when I was Good like point. in the third grade, polio was a big deal. Yep. Yep. And here's the way it happened: <clears throat> teacher says we're all going downstairs. <laughs> okay. And we all went downstairs, and we stand in line, and they all gave us a shot. Or, or even better. There was no choice. No, there was or, no better, or better, or better, because kids crazy. hated shots. Uh, sugar Q. Oh, the, really? the, the Sabin vaccine is the one that really solved the problem, because kids didn't right. have to get a shot in the arm. They just took a nice, sweet little sugar cube. And I remember it. It was a, it was a sugar cube, and there was purple in the middle where the liquid had been poured. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, we t literally wiped polio out. Polio That's was right. totally decimated over the entire face of the planet. And did anybody argue about it? No. no. And and does anybody argue about the fact that the kid's got to go to school, but he has to have his measles vaccination? Or he has to have this, or he has to have that. And do people mind getting this and that? No. But all of a sudden, this is terrible. This is something that kills you. You know? 
as I said, 15 soldiers got killed in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam. Jeez, I'm losing <laughs> it. In, uh, in Afghanistan yesterday, it's very sad. How many Americans died because of COVID yesterday in America? A lot more. And we don't have Charlie tonight to tell us. Yeah, we don't have Charlie tonight to tell us. So, I mean, let's all put this in perspective, okay? Um, you know, the the real story here is people get vaccinated. But I, I'm talking to the uh, already vaccinated. So I, I was I was feeling much better than I than I than I should have, and I looked up the statistics for my state, and only 47.7 percent of those eligible for both shots have taken it in my state. Only 47.7%. I thought it was much higher than that. Were you saying you were feeling good? Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking that, you know, we're because I've gotten my shots, everybody that I know has gotten their shots and everything. Yeah. But statistically, my state is lagging in bo people getting both vaccinations. So there's only 47.7% who are fully vaccinated. Well, how many feel? How many here are comfortable going outside? I'm not fully. I mean, all right. uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, think I, think Patrick, I think Patrick is. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm wearing my mask but anytime no, I go. Nobody out. wants it's to get free hands. It, 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 I hate to say this, but nobody wants to get within coughing distance of the gimp. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm comfortable. I just take care of myself. That's all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Tomorrow, yeah. Stay away from everybody. Yeah. Tomorrow I go get my oil change on my car mm -hmm. and no mask. Thank fucking God. They don't require it and I'm not wearing it. But I'm they keep not, you in I, the I, I, I don't need a diaper on my face. Life is good. But don't they keep you in the car? Before they were doing that, even the oil change, you would go in there and they kept you in the car while they did the oil change. Yeah, they will. <laughs> no, they better not. I don't want to be sitting on their fucking I want to go look at the showroom. I'm good. By the way, I, just a question. And please don't think this is rude of me to ask, but when you're there getting an oil change and a lube job on your car, do they then do it for your wheelchair as well? That would be nice if they did. <laughs> but I do have to put oil on the uh, axle for the wheels. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they, they never... I should... I should ask them that tomorrow yeah could so, you do, say, so i'm here for the oil and lube of the car how much the wheelchair get included and the chair is free yeah. yeah you pay for the car the chair is free yeah yeah, yeah. ask them it'd be fun to get here what the answer is on that one um <laughs> so anyway i uh, 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 uh tony brought it up uh sir han sir han Looks like he's going to be getting out after all these years. Did Trump pardon him? Uh, no. No, uh, the Kennedy family came forward and said they thought that was enough time he should be allowed out of prison. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's been put for probation or anything before? No. He's tried, you know. But, um, I mean, considering the enormity of what he did or was accused of doing, What's right. he been? Fifty-three years. He's been in prison. Something like that. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, and um, uh, the uh, the Kennedy family has uh, uh, agreed with the pardon, not the pardon, but the parole. Uh, and so it looks like he's probably going to get out. They had a picture of him in the paper today. It looks nothing like he looked when he was a kid, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there's still a lot of question about that. Did you hear what Trump said? Did, did I did I see this wrong? But the Trump said that Osama bin Laden wasn't the mastermind of 9/11. Well, I gotta look. I'm gonna Google it now. You said that because he's one of these truthers, like these conspiracy. Yeah, theories. I know, but I mean, he, he said that, uh, and I don't know what he bases it on because even even Osama bin Laden was happy to say, "Yep, I did it." Yeah, didn't he claim that he did it? Yeah, he did. Oh yeah, he never. You know, he pretty he well. Like a badge of armor. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, maybe he knows something we don't know. Maybe he has some intel we weren't privy to. Yeah, yeah it's his gut. Well, um, you know, I mean, I. Do you think it was just Osama bin Laden that he masterminded this whole thing, or that some of his lieutenants were the ones who really masterminded it? Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure he had an executive council and they all talked about it beforehand. Well, I mean, it, or could it have been one of several or a dozen different operations they had going out there and this is the one that happened? That could be too, you know. So, but anyway, that's the latest from Donald Trump, the latest idiocy He's so from funny. him, you know. <laughs> and. Some guy one of my partners in India just found out I'm online, so he's asking for a meeting right now. <laughs> oh, boy. Why don't you put him on with us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have good news. Oh, what? Remember my car where I thought I blew up the motor? Which one was the this? McLaren? The, the McLaren? Yeah, the McLaren. Yeah. The guy called me today and said, no, everything's fine. Come and pick it up. What was no. wrong? Something was wrong with it, right? That's yeah, that blew a hose, and then now he's trying to tell me there were two hoses blown, and that's why they didn't have pressure in the motor, and then blah, 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 and then I don't know what the story is, but my car's fine. I, I drove the hell of it today, so. Oh, okay. So you're happy. Oh, my God. Didn't they happy. pull the head off, though? No, they were going to take the whole motor out, and mm. they, uh, and, uh, the another guy came in, another service guy, started running a couple more tests first, and then they, he didn't conclude that that it was uh, the head gasket. They thought it was something else. I uh, don't. I still don't think they know what happened. I still think that maybe they screwed up in the initial test. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah so I'm happy. So I'm how happy many cars do you, how many cars do you own? Now I only own three. Only own three. At my worst, I only own two. Uh, and that's when I had a lot of fun. You had money. two apartments had two, and girls at both, and I had two girlfriends yes. and coke everywhere. <laughs> well, I I I I just went with the Costco theory that you got to <laughs> tape them together, you know. And uh, uh, but uh, no, uh, I, uh, I I had two cars. I had a, a 300 ZX and an Acura. Nothing as extraordinary as your McLaren, however, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it was, they want, <clears throat> so everything is under warranty anyways, but they said to replace a motor was $70,000 if it was a motor. Now, yeah. And the car didn't cost you that much, did it? Oh, yeah, it did. Oh, it yeah. did? Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, it did. Oh. Well, you got a lot of fuck you money, huh? No. <laughs> I sold two of my cars. I sold my, my cars, so. Yeah. You sold the fat. Yeah. The what? Kevin Kevin did good. His car did good at the the Hot Wheels show. He got some first place boat and, and what was it? I mean the one with the fires uh, smoke the out its ass. Car? Yeah, yeah. He got recognition. That was good. He got further than my gold Cadillac did. I they just teased me and Pretended like I was going to win, and then they gave it to a Honda. <laughs> so. oh. well, they, yeah, I'm still kind of miffed about it, but I'm not going to say. Well, nothing. so then you know how I feel about the uh, Hall of Fame. So, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat. I'm kind of. <laughs> they they gave a guy, they let a guy in that that videoed in vertical mode, and he should have done it in horizontal, and it was against the rules. And it kind of pissed me off. So. And he won anyway. Well, he's he was in the running, and if he had gotten in, if he had not gone in, I probably would have been the one to get in. Oh, because okay. the votes were close right there. Mm -hmm. well, what and is this? This is like a hot rod show. Is that what it is? Well, it was it was a thing to get your car put into a uh, made into a Hot Wheels car. Yeah, oh, that's a big thing for car people, but you know. How do they and get? It was how, only the bottom minute, stage. A, they make them in it's the like hot, a, they make them in the Hot Wheels cars. How do they get them that small? They put them in the washer and <laughs> turn on the dryer real high. <laughs> hot water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They shrink. That but shit. I went through a lot of shit, and I actually did a whole video in HDR in 60 frames per second, and the parameters were you had to do it in horizontal, 30 frames per second, and no HDR. And I had done one in completely the wrong parameters, and I went and redid the whole video again. Yeah, and sent it in. And, and what right do you do parameters. a video? What do you do a video of? It's 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 not. Oh, like you do it on the front, the back, the side, what it does, inside, and all that shit. And then they cut the fuck out of it, 
<laughs> and you know the the video that I did, they cut three quarters of it what out. Would, what would they do if you just sent them a porno film? Oh, <laughs> uh, they'd probably arrest me. I don't know. You probably win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably have a knock on the door. But. <laughs> But it ended up on the local news. I know that. I didn't see it, but the, somebody told me that it was on the local news and stuff. So What, your that's, car or the... Yeah, the car. Oh. And even the guy on the now, news now said... that's the one you won, right? Yeah. 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 So... They got, we got this uh, five guys, and one is a designer, and that designer put his car in first place. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Actually, two of the designers liked it. Now where you where'd you win this? You won this down, uh, out of a, some kind of contest in Nevada? No, it was in Arizona. It Arizona, was a, a, youth, a youth group. Yeah. That, uh, so they put, put it together, and then I did a I did their fundraiser. And so they put won. together this hot car, and yeah, you they, you won it. Now they what, built the car. Yeah. Okay, what you were presenting for this uh, contest or whatever it is. Was that just the car as is, or did, have you made improvements to it? I made a couple of improvements to it, and one of them was the flamethrowers. I got it to throw flames last week. I installed the coils and and uh, made it throw flames out the back of it. Yeah. We're going to cook hot dogs next show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if so, you go to my YouTube channel, you can see it. Okay. Your YouTube channel is what? It's Kevin Stopper. Just Kevin Stopper. Yeah, I, I, can, I can post it if you want. But I, I think I saw you. I think you you asked me. I did it. Uh, you asked me. You went to LinkedIn and c joined LinkedIn or something. And oh yeah, I did that. I was yeah messing around with LinkedIn. I don't go in there very often. Well, I, and you asked me. You asked me to follow you, so I I'm following Kevin Stopper on. Yeah, the, you were you were the on, head CEO on, of EIEIO. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the CEO of EIEIO. Oh, no, the E-I-E-I-O of blah, blah, blah. But anyway. Yeah, I was just buzzing through LinkedIn, seeing a bunch of people that I used to work with, and I poked them a couple of times to see if they were still around. I have, I am on LinkedIn. Five. I've got maybe, I don't know, a, couple, a thousand people following me or something, and I've never had anything to do with LinkedIn. I just don't, I don't even get it, to be honest with you. Well, I don't either. I have people that look for, you know, that want to look for me for jobs and stuff like that. But <clears throat> Who gets jobs out of LinkedIn? Does anybody get jobs out of LinkedIn? I get oh, offers yeah. all the time. Yeah, I've, I've oh. had offers. But they want me to move to Timbuktu. And, yeah, yeah, headhunters. headhunters. Well, I, I guess yeah, I'm a lot not, of headhunters. I guess I'm not that good because I've never gotten an offer for anything. Yeah. They, they want me to run a... A nuclear plant, to Qatar. Update your resume, uh, Alex. That's all you need to do. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I think I put. I, I guess I didn't put my resume out there, you know. But uh, I, uh, you know, I. Uh, uh, the, the thing I am signed up for is this casting thing, and they keep sending me all these things about the casting for extras. Hmm. And I'm thinking of doing some of them when I'm not feeling so tired. Just uh, go after a couple of them and see if I get the jobs. You know, uh, you just eight hours, you make one hundred and eighty-four dollars, something like that. Were you, you know, requested yeah. down at Trump Tower before he came down the escalator? No, no. no. <laughs> uh, you mean when they hired extras for that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I never saw the casting notice on that one, but you know, <laughs> what have you? Anyway, I'm going to start the theme here. Been nice tonight, you know. Just really nice, Josh. Yeah, I was oh. listening in earlier. Really good conversation, guys. Oh, Just well, because we got some some really heavy hitters here when it comes to talking about this kind of stuff. Josh yeah. and uh, Vernon and Patrick and Kevin and Tony and Jeff and then of course Brian Neary. There's no little kid peeking her head in or anything like that. No, <laughs> no, she's 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 playing games. She's playing games. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's always playing games. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and say good night to you and thank you for joining me here on the Citizen Panel. There we go. There's my hand. I was waving off to the side like this, like they could see me. No not going to happen. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That's it for the week. Um, 
Stay tuned now for Jack Bishop. He is next with The Intersection. You can call him on Skype at GabNet Live. That's GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. We'll be back again on Monday. We do a little thing called the Pop-Up Program. It's just a really nice gathering of a bunch of people having a good time. And we would love you to join us if you can. Uh, and that is on uh, Monday at 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, then again, we'll be back again on Tuesday, same time. 10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, get vaccinated, okay? And wear a mask if you aren't. Bye.